I know this is going to sound rich coming from me, but I think there's too much cynicism in the Doctor Who fan base of late. A lot of people have been talking about how volatile the fandom's become in the last few years, but it's only now that it's really starting to annoy me. A week or so ago, we had the annual Children in Need telethon, and in that mysterious point of time known as the past, previous Who showrunners have got everyone, myself included, into the bad habits of tuning in every year, expecting a trailer for the festive special. As a result, I tuned in this year, couldn't help myself, it's a reflex by this point, and I was baffled by various things. The fact the show was so low-key, and had missed an obvious and by this point, much needed opportunity for publicity. The squished aspect ratio, the fact certain actors weren't even looking at the camera when delivering their piece, it was all a bit uncomfortable to watch, frankly. A lot of people online were pissed off for understandable reasons, because it feels like the BBC or the production team don't know what they're doing when it comes to publicity. But on the other hand, I understand why Chris Chibnall's approach is different. He personally feels it's right that the focus should be on the work of the Children in Need charity rather than on the show by the looks of things. And I used to feel some previous years, 2014 in particular, was somewhat slapdash. Oh, I'll just cut a bit out of the Christmas special and call it a day. That'll work. Yeah, that's nice, but I always found it a bit lazy and selfish in a, yeah, the charity's great, but me, 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 watch our Christmas special sort of way. So, I understand why Chibnall, since coming in as showrunner, has done something different, focusing more on delighting young fans of the show with surprises, like he did last year, which was a cute bit of TV, I can sympathise with that. But what got me was how in the aftermath of this year's contribution, fans were tearing each other up on comment sections and forums for having different opinions. I know this has been going on for a while, but I was particularly aggrieved by an argument on TV forum, which ran like this. Even for a charity of the BBC, the current Doctor Who team just can't be bothered. I awaited the usual bombardment of replies from people not liking what I've wrote. Just my opinion, if you don't like it, fine. And that isn't an opinion, that's a completely baseless assertion. It wouldn't be children in need without the childish, entitled Doctor Who fan and Brian Chandram. Right, so bear in mind this is TV forum, not Gallifrey Base or any other specialised Who fan forum. It now seems the Doctor Who fandom has gained a reputation amongst casual viewers of TV for being quote-unquote childish and entitled. It equally seems that speaking negatively about a VT for a charity event is a hissy fit and amounts to heresy, even if there are legitimate criticisms that could be made. Personally, I think both sides of the fandom need to calm the hell down and stop moaning about each other and or aspect ratios. And so today I wish to announce that from now on I, Max Williams, shall strive to unite the Doctor Who fandom. Aren't I a nice individual? Don't I do great things for the Doctor Who community? Please shower me in adulation or suffer the wrath of God. Um, can someone tell me how you, you how do you, how do you unite a fandom? Alright boys and girls, so here I have this special voodoo paper um, that I bought from a black market dealer down the road who I'm pretty certain he's reputable and he knows what he's talking about and he was being honest with me when I handed over my 200 quid on this special voodoo paper. And I've basically, I've drawn the words, um, I don't know if you can make out, but th they basically represent different halves of the fandom. So yeah, one says Dom and the other says Fan. Um, so what I'm now going to do with Fanny and Dommy is, look at this, I am going to bring them together. See, there we go. Just align that so it looks like a word and they're all at the same height as each other. See, the fandom is united. Okay, and just to make sure, I'm just going to call a friend of mine. So just excuse me one moment. Hello, fairies. Hi, it's Max here. Yeah, yeah. Um, you doing all right? How are things in Cardiff? Pretty quiet. Okay. Um, yeah. Can you just can you do me a favour? Can you? I imagine you're online because you always are online. Um, can you just look up and just go on one of the fan forums? Doesn't matter whether it's Gallifrey Base or you know any of them. Um, see if Doctor Who fans are still arguing about the timeless children or children in need or just arguing about children in general. I, I'm pretty sure they won't be. What? 
calling for it to be cancelled and saying it was a load of rot and other people are wishing cancer on them. Right, okay. Um, so that... Oh, no, that's fine. It's just, um, yeah, something hasn't worked, but... Okay, well, thanks very much. Cheers. Right, um, that doesn't seem to have worked. I think we... I would say back to the drawing board, but I don't have a drawing board because I'm not child, and this isn't Victorian England! Stupid! Stupid! Right, why did I think it would be a good idea to trust some shady looking guy on the street corner? Right, in there with the face mask and the chocolates, and don't come out! Right, so given how well that went, as an alternative way of bringing the fandom together, I propose we celebrate what we actually like about Doctor Who, and take a more positive look at previously overlooked stories. Hence, I shall now look at some more underrated stories from the Doctor Who canon that I think deserve more love. <laughs> By the time this first story aired, the Third Doctor had already encountered many great foes, be it the Master, the Sontarans, or the Spiders of Metabolus Free. Yeah, I used the Matt Smith pronunciation, what's she gonna do about it? But here, John Pertwee faces perhaps his greatest challenge, the tyranny of road traffic accidents. Here's how to remember the Green Cross Cone. First, find a safe place to cross, then stop. Stand on the pavement near the curb. Look all round for traffic and listen. If traffic is coming, let it pass. When there is no traffic near, walk straight across the road. Keep looking and listening for traffic while you cross. Stay! Well, now we'll all remember the green cross code. And use it. Splink! You've probably never seen this episode of Who before, and that's because it was banned after Mary Whitehouse and other powerful self-appointed guardians of public morality accused the episode of encouraging dangerous and reckless behaviour amongst young children. And quite right too. We can't have children crossing the road in an organised fashion remembering complex mnemonics with more than three letters, but we can make a mighty fine dance mix of this episode in just five minutes for no other reason than the sheer hell of it. Here you go, babies. Yes, how to remember the green cross curves. First, find a safe place to cross, then stop, then stop, then stop. Stand on the pavement near the curb, near the curb, near the curb. Look all round for traffic. Listen, listen, listen. If traffic is coming, is coming, let it pass, let it pass, let it pass. When there is no traffic near, near, walk straight across the road, cross the road, cross the road. Walk straight across the road, cross the road, cross the road. Walk straight across the road, cross the road, cross the road. Keep looking and listen and traffic while you cross. Well, now we'll all remember the green coffee and you and you and you and you splink blink 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 Moving swiftly on, when Doctor Who fails, it does at least have the decency to fail in interesting ways, and this episode from 2013 is no exception, entitled The After Party. This incredibly experimental episode is often dismissed as a shoddy mess and a debacle, but it's actually a highly innovative piece of television, an intelligent public service broadcasting at its finest, featuring some great moments of tension... Mark Gatiss over here, who's... Just, just let them sit down. ...thought-provoking philosophical subject matters... What is it about Doctor Who? Okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, I'll move on. And some of the show's most memorable celebrity cameos ever. In particular, One Direction's bizarre contributions to a Steve Wright tribute act, which helped me fall asleep after many a bout of insomnia. Fantastic. Brilliant. I love the fact that the amazing things you can do with television and the Doctor can do anything, but we can't get we're rid of the delay to LA. It's incredible. Uh, boys, have you got any more questions? Television and the Doctor can do anything, but we can't get we rid of the delay to LA. It's incredible. Next up, the classic sixth Doctor story from 1985, titled Famine Appeal. 
I've always been a bit weirded out by the story truth be told, mainly due to its tell don't show attitude that I normally associate with bad writing, and no, I'll resist the urge to go there because you can't deny that this episode does have atmosphere, and certainly proves that, as ever, less is more. This next episode from 1997 speaks for itself. It's the Gay Daleks! It's time for another adventure with the shirt-lifting Pepperpots as they ram their way into Saturn's ring in their planet-hopping toilet, the Turtis. Yeah, because you haven't heard that one before. Ooh, no! Uh, yes, ooh, ooh! Talk dirty! I am exterminating! Ooh! White wee wee! Ooh! No, white no, wee no, wee! No, no, ooh! No, no, ooh! No, no, ooh! No, it's in my eye! I mean, TV Awful has its high moments, but I personally prefer Spike Milligan's Pakistani Dalek sketch. And finally, the Doctor Who story where Max Williams is listening to some dub music when he should be studying. You might be wondering what the hell this has to do with Doctor Who, and how this can possibly be part of the canon. Well, anything and everything is canon now, thanks to Chris Chibnall. Absolutely everything that you have seen and everything around you could be a Doctor Who story following the events of the Timeless Children, and the complete destruction and bastardization of nearly 60 years of history. It's a disrespectful new The show I love must be cancelled, Chibnall must be hung, Poland must be invaded, the world is too densely popular, it must be covered in place. A great reset is required. Everyone just. <laughs> oh, yes, that's absolutely brilliant. Oh, yeah, this is funny. This will get views, and everyone will laugh and think I'm a good person because I want love and I'm lonely. I certainly won't regret this video a year from now, like I regret saying the Saranga conundrum was wrong under the Holocaust and the worst story since the last one for not being the base under siege story I wanted and expected it to be. So, there we are. But let's not stop at underrated stories in our quest to bring the fandom together. In the spirit of children in need, I feel like spreading some love to a very special fan of the show. Because I'm nice like that. Right. Beep, 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 beep. Hello? Hello, is that Samuel Joseph Phineas? Yeah, well, I read. Excellent. Al allow me to introduce myself. Uh, my name's Max Williams, though chances are I expect you've probably heard of me. No. No. Right, well, I'm, I'm, I'm from the hugely popular YouTube channel, Cynical Who. Right. And is I understand it... that you're a big fan of Doctor Who, is that right? Well, no, I used to be, but not anymore. Excellent. Too. Well, you know, I've heard a lot about you and your love for the show. Right, that's great. Is this going to be long? Because I'm busy. I've got And I to... thought, seeing as you love the show so much, you could do with a very special and personal Who-related gift. What? Do I get a personalised tour of the set? No, even better than that. The chance to have dinner with the dog. Even better. Have a guess. The only existing... No, even better than that. The only existing... No, have a guess. Even better. The... Fury from the Deep on no, DVD? it's a second-hand copy of the complete Series 12 on DVD starring Jodie Whittaker and Mandip For Gill. God's I know sake, you don't have what? it because of, um, yeah, we've seen your DVD no, collection. Just, no, and this, I thought it would be great for you to watch the best series of Doctor Who ever off, and ever over wanker. and over again. Um, it has a bit of a tear and it was second-hand. Go away! You know, you I get don't them want to talk to you! And... Hello? <laughs> there we go! Another satisfied customer! I think you'll agree that my valiant efforts have restored order and healed the divisions that have blighted this fandom for too long. I hope that we can now look to a positive future, where all Doctor Who fans, irrespective of opinion, race, colour and creed, 
can appreciate each other's differences while agreeing that only one side is right. I want us all to hold hands and fuck each other in massive six-in-a-bed romps as opposed to masturbating on our own in grungy basements. Now would you all please stand for the national anthem? <laughs> If traffic is coming, walk straight across the road.